What's up, everybody? What's up, everybody? Again, this is the Information Man of the Information Man Show. And uh, what I want to do right now is get into health. Uh, as we know right now, the virus is having an impact on our society, on our communities. It's impacting people in so many different ways. And they're telling people to take the vaccine. Okay. However, you don't hear many of your professionals out there speaking to you upon the reality and the issues of the importance of boosting your immune system through proper diet, right? Proper diet, proper exercise, making sure that you definitely stay active and getting out there and getting plenty of sun because you get vitamin D from the sun. However, your body also produces vitamin D as well. So that's an area that I'm gonna be talking about today that I think is very important. Let me also here do this too. For those of you out there, this is a example of vitamin D supplement that I take. Your body, and I'm gonna explain it to you in a, in a pre-produced uh, audio that I've prepared for this video, but vitamin D is very important. Getting yourself a multivitamin, very important as well. Let me put that in the screen where you can see that. Very important, I got these from Trader Joe's. Um, another thing that's very important is uh, I have a vitamin here that gives me calcium, magnesium, and zinc. Now this is very important. Uh, you should definitely drink water. If you can't get a spring water or a, uh, a mineral water, you can also get a alkaline water. I got this from Trader Joe's as well, an alkaline water that's charged up. Uh, but if you don't have a, a mineral water, you can always uh, drink a alkaline water or a water with combination of the zinc, magnesium, and calcium because you want minerals to go in, in, in conjunction with your water intake because uh, that helps the water to work on the plasmic level, which will definitely benefit your body. It's important to definitely get uh, ginger, garlic, uh, your watermelon, your, your collard greens, your greeny vegetables and fruits, um, your G-bombs as, as the Minister of Health always speaks upon, which will be the proper beans and things you need to eat. So I'm going to stop right there. Uh, and these are some of the things that you should uh, definitely think about when it comes to immune health, getting the proper diet, the proper uh, supplementation, the, the proper um, what we would call um, nutrition, nutritions and micronutritions, micro uh, nutrients, let me say that, into your uh, body. So you want to work it from all different levels. Exercise is very important, but keep this in mind. Exercise, I think 80% of your health uh, and staying in shape is connected to your diet, maybe around 15% just physical exercise, but both are important. With that said, I want to get into um, this right now. I, want, I hope you all enjoy the presentation and uh, where a brother's taking it at. I appreciate everybody that's here. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Uh, make sure you definitely subscribe to the uh, channel as well, the Information Man Show. And I appreciate you all being here. And with that said, let me go ahead and um, fire this up right now. Let's get into it. This is about vitamin D, the importance of it. I have an audio prepared for you. Thank you. Peace. Okay, why is vitamin D important? Studies suggest that vitamin D can help prevent respiratory infection or reduce the severity if you have a deficiency. But the jury is still out on exactly how it protects you from coronavirus. But some medical experts out there are saying, everybody, are recommending that vitamin D supplementation can help boost your immune system. Okay? Vitamin D is unique because it is one of the only two vitamins that your body can produce on its own. The other is vitamin K 
and you can also get it from other sources like foods, uh, supplements. You got, uh, I believe, like your fish, your eggs, things of that nature. But I'll get more into that. It's also technically a hormone that regulates how much calcium is in your blood. Unlike other vitamins, vitamin D requires conversion in the liver and kidneys to make it an active hormone. Vitamin D is a fatty soluble vitamin that our bodies use to absorb and maintain healthy calcium phosphate levels, which are necessary to grow and maintain our bones. Now, vitamin D is important for your bones, most importantly, but it supports your body in other ways. Here are the ways. While we generally associate vitamin D with muscular skeletal health it is actually it actually has several functions in the body including it plays a role in immune function and reducing inflammation inflammation now vitamin d and immune health let's get further into that research shows that vitamin d plays an important role in immune function and deficiency in it It's shown to increase vitamin D is shown to increase to infections. Some studies have shown that vitamin D deficiency is even associated with greater risk of self reported upper respiratory tract infections. So having a deficiency in vitamin D makes you more acceptable to infections is what I was trying to say there. Now, One of the main functions of vitamin D is to help activate T cells, a.k.a. the killer cells in the body. T cells actually detect and destroy foreign pathogens like viruses that make vitamin D especially um, strong for maintaining a functioning immune system that's capable of fighting back foreign pathogens in your body. It's important to know that although coronavirus or the virus that we're dealing with today does affect, it does affect, let me repeat, it does affect the respiratory system. Researchers and doctors know little about how vitamin D affects your risk of catching COVID-19 at this time. The best way to reduce your risk of being infected with coronavirus is to follow CDC and the world health the who guidelines that your local officials say to take care of your health now i'm just going to stop right here and say okay that is true however we do know from the media that both the cdc center for disease control and the world health organization they have said they have they keep changing uh all the time the rules behind how you need to protect yourself from this virus. So there's always some changing. And we know under the Donald Trump administration, um, there was a lot of suppression of information that they were allowing the who the, uh, the, the center for disease control to release certain data. So although we want to rely on the, we want to get information from these health organizations, we are still getting, all different types of information every time we turn around. I mean, currently right now we have a variance in this virus where they're saying that it came from Europe. Now it's in California. It's cases in New York. So this variance, this mutation of this virus is also having, sorry, is going to be having its impact as well. Now, what your local officials say and to take care of your health, I'm going to repeat that again, as much as you can overall. And what do we mean by taking care of your health? Your diet. You got to take care of your diet, what you're putting in your body, your supplementation and what have you, proper rest, proper exercise, proper ability to get outside and get some sun as well. Now, vitamin D is known to help the immune system, which is promising or protecting you from many different types of illnesses. Now, how does vitamin D or how to get enough vitamin D in your system? Now, a lot of you may think that, well, all I have to do is go outside and get some sun. 
very good. You definitely need to be outside because vitamin D, getting vitamin D from the sun absorbs into your body that much more rapidly because it's absorbing into your skin and what have you. But they have found that even when people go outside and get sun, that there are still people who have a deficiency in their vitamin D. So there, so the whole thing is that you want to have a balance. You want to have, you want to get a balance of getting outside and getting sun as well as making sure you get plenty of vitamin D in your diet, what you're eating. And then you can also supplement with a vitamin D, obviously vitamin. Okay. Now in 2014, experts predict that about 1 billion people worldwide have low levels of vitamin D or deficiency, making it one of the most common vitamin deficiencies. If you suspect you are low in vitamin D, you should ask your doctor always, um, definitely consult with a medical professional because I'm not a medical professional. I mean, I'm not a doctor. I work in, in uh, the medical profession in, ther- in, uh, in, in mental health and psychology, but you definitely want to consult a physician, a trained licensed medical physician. So it's so, so consult your doctor so that they can test you for your levels of how deficient you are. This way you can make sure you are supplementing the right way because there is something called where you can over, I don't want to say you can overdo it, meaning you can put too much um, vitamins or too much of anything and too much of anything can be bad for you. Uh, Everything in moderation is better for you in moderation, but you don't want to overdo it with anything, whether it be supplements and even certain foods you don't want to over uh overdo it with so you want you want your vitamin d whether you're getting it from supplements food what have you want it to be at at, at really good levels if possible always ask your doctor before you start uh supplements now the that once again the best way to get vitamin d into your system one of the best ways is definitely through your diet and, and, and actually being outside okay but Sometimes people have to take supplements. And if you're going to take a supplemental pill, you want to make sure you don't overdose on something like that. Now, here's the recommendation when it comes to taking a vitamin D. The recommendations for vitamin D for adults is between 600 and 800 IUs. Although that the number is up to, to up for debate. There's been a lot of debates about this among science and medical communities. There are three ways to get vitamin D through food since it is naturally occurring in some foods from direct sun exposure on your skin and through supplements. Food sources of vitamin D are as following. Vitamin D naturally occurs in eggs, egg yolks, beef, liver, fatty fish, like uh, tuna, uh, salmon if you like salmon, swordfish, things of that nature, liver, oil. uh, You can get it in your cheese, uh, you know, orange juice. Let me see right here. Vitamin D is even naturally occurs a lot in foods, which are foods that have have vitamin D added to them. Vitamin D is added to cereal. Okay, so some cereals have forms of vitamin D in them. Dairy. Uh, I'm not a big I'm not a big opponent or promoter of milk because you're literally putting fat in you to your body, and some people have issues with milk. Maybe you're lactose intolerant, but Vitamin D, there is a source of vitamin D, obviously, in dairy products. Uh, Plants and milk, a lot of people think that uh, you get your protein primarily from animals. No, proteins uh, primarily come from plants because the animals are eating the plants, and that's how a lot of animals get the protein in their bodies, like cows, for example. So there's a lot of protein in plants as well as a lot of vitamin D Uh, And plants quite naturally because plants photosynthesize things when they're growing in the outside in the sun, they need sun to grow. So you got to keep, you got to keep that in mind as well. We are just not eating. Now, this is what I, this is where I wanted to go with this. So, so you have uh, plants, you have milk, you have orange juice. And even though you take in these types of um, nutrition, right? foods and all these sort of things even though you can get vitamin d i'm going to say it again from foods it is difficult to get enough 
from that source on its own. As I had said before, you got to get it from multi levels, multi, multi different sources. Since the amount of vitamin D in most foods is pretty small, it's not that easy to get your daily recommended intake of vitamin D through food. We're just not eating. A lot of people are just not eating enough, large enough quantity of most of the foods that I just mentioned to get the sort of amount that you really need fully to not to avoid being vitamin D deficient. Now, the question is how much beef, liver, uh, fish, how much should you take into your body? This is the thing. Like I said before, you want to have a combination of food, supplementation, and getting your butt out there and getting some sunlight. Sunlight exposure and vitamin D. Let's go into that. Vitamin D is associated with the sun for reasons your body can produce its own vitamin D when you are when you expose your skin in the sun for periods of time. About 15 minutes of sun exposure per day is what many experts say is sufficient to make vitamin D in your body. This means you want to have a good amount of skin uncovered by clothing or sunscreen um, that you, so that your arms and legs, covering up your arms and legs, since those things in hip are, um, you know, look, the, the, this is the reality. The more melanated you are as a person, meaning the darker your, your pigment is, the more you may be able to tolerate sun versus someone who has less pigmentation um, that may not be able to tolerate sun. But you just really, um, it's just, you know, it's not a matter of you just having to lay out in the sun. Uh, you know, if we're in the summertime, obviously you're going to take a walk. You're going to have your arms exposed and legs exposed if you're wearing shorts or a short sleeve shirt. Whatever you need to do when you go out and you walk, um, just get a little exposure to the sun. And, and that's what you should be doing anyway. Every time you go out, you relax, you're walking, you're jogging, you're exercising and what have you. Now, clo- now this is, what I, this is where I want to go next. How much sun should get into uh, your body. The UV radiation from the sun triggers vitamin D and synthesizes in your bodies. But there are a lot of factors to consider. Okay. And those things, those factors that you should consider is your geographical location, where you live, you live in an area where it's cold, not a lot of sun. I know in Seattle, Washington, it rains a lot. It's a lot more cloudy. Your geographical location is what you should consider. Sunscreen, coverage, the amount of melanin, as I said before, in your skin can impact vitamin D absorption. So if you've got more melanin, as I said before, meaning you have a darker pigment skin, you're going to absorb more vitamin D into your system. Okay, that makes it really difficult to prove, all right, creating what they would call a generalization or a generalized guideline for the appropriate amount of sun exposure that a person should have because you got to consider where you live at in the world, skin pigmentation and what have you. Now, vitamin D supplements, which is another thing. So this is where supplements come into a come into being a factor because you want to supplement to make up for what you're not getting in your sun exposure and as well as your uh, food diet. Okay, so vitamin D supplements because it's hard to get enough vitamin D from food and you may spend most of your time inside, especially in the winter time, especially with us being with this virus right now where we're being told in some states you got to be indoors. You got to be locked down. You can't go out too much. All right. So when you're inside, many people need to supplement to get enough vitamin D when you're spending a lot of time inside your house, your apartment, your dwelling, especially in the wintertime in particular. Vitamin D supplementation may be the most practical solution for many people, especially if you're if you live in the northern half of the country, which they call the 37th parallel north. Now. This is the deal. 
People who live in these areas have been advised not to venture out in the sun for long periods of time, especially without sun protection due to skin cancer risk or have a lack of diet, a lack of uh, proper food in their system. So, and we know that skin cancer is a, is a risk. Some people are more at risk of skin cancer than others. Now, you can find vitamin D in many different types of supplements, including multivitamins. Okay, you got vitamin D capsules. You got vitamin D supplements that are generally come in two forms. What are those two forms? You got D3 and you got D2. And D2 is the form that derived from plants and is from is found often found in foods okay now d3 vitamin d d3 is the vitamin d naturally produced by our body so we have natural vitamin d being produced inside of our bodies and it is typical is the type that is found in animal source so d3 is what you find in that is being produced in the human body and you will find it in the bodies of animals right and then you have the d2 which is primarily produced uh, by plants okay now d3 with vitamin k2 and k2 works in unison with each other research have suggested that vitamin d3 type of vitamin d is is a naturally produced is naturally produced in the human body and tends to raise blood co- uh, concentration more and maintain those levels for longer periods of time all right so this is something thing when it comes to um vitamin d vitamin d once again i got i gotta say this vitamin d is a fat soluble vit- uh, vitamin it helps helps the body absorb it better so since vitamin d is a fatty soluble take it with fatty fat sources to help the body absorb it better so you want to most a lot of times when you take vitamins you want it the back of the vitamin bottle will tell you uh, in a lot of cases that you want to eat something before you take the vitamin so with vitamin d supplement it goes really well when you have a meal with it something uh, that has a fat source to it which helps the body to absorb the vitamin d much better what can happen if you are deficient in vitamin d vitamin d deficiency can mean your immune system is more vulnerable but there are some other important conditions to know when it comes to vitamin d several vitamin d deficiencies can lead to a condition called rickets in children okay in adults um then you have people who have uh, uh, brittle bones uh, they get, you know, you've seen the, uh, the, for lack of a better word, you've seen people with um, hunch hunchbacks and things of that nature because you have deficiency in the in the bone strength. And we know that vitamin D, calcium, and all that is something that when women get older, uh, they become the depletion of that in their bodies. And so you have a lot of women when, as they get older, their bones will get uh, more brittle. So this is why, as you get older, vitamin D becomes that much more important. For your bone strength and health because you get older you lose density in your bones and it can put you at risk especially when you take a fall i've worked in nursing homes in my past and i saw a lot of people uh, elderly people who had very weak bones and when they would fall they would be now permanently in a wheelchair due to that so that's very important to keep in mind so another connection that I must bring up that scientists are researching in the link between mood disorder and vitamin D deficiency. Many studies have looked at depression risk specifically um, found that there's a link between vitamin D deficiency and the risk of becoming depressed mood swings, uh, unstable mood. And I know that to be true working in mental health myself. And this happens in adults. There's other studies that show that adults with depression were given vitamin D supplementation and it did help improve symptoms in many of the patients that were part of the study. So once again, vitamin D can also 
not only boost your immune system, but it can also help how you feel about yourself in terms of depression. And they've done studies where they had people who, when they were giving an increase in vitamin D or they were being put on a vitamin D type of diet, uh, it was helping their depressed symptoms. So I find that a uh, very, uh, very, very interesting. Now, too much of a good thing overdoing vitamin D. I want to say this. This is very important. I'm going to say this for the for the record. You have to consult your medical practitioner, your doctor, before you begin just taking uh, these type of supplements because everybody's body is different. What works for one person may not work for another person. So, so one person, vitamin D supplements helps them. Another person, it may not because we're all different. We all have different health levels. We all have different medical conditions. So you have to consult your medical practitioner, your med- medical professional, a doctor, before you just start putting supplements like this in your body because you don't want to have a adverse effect because everyone is different. And let me break this down. Too much of a good thing or too much uh, overdoing of vitamin D, this is important. Do not overdo vitamin D supplements since taking unsafe amounts of anything can have negative effects on your health, like your kidney. You can have kidney problems, kidney stones, anything like that. Toxic conditions that can develop in your body where there is too much calcium in your blood. Generally, take more than about 4,000 IUs per day is considered too much. So if you're taking a, if you're considering taking a vitamin D supplement and you come across a bottle of vitamin D and it's got about 4,000 IUs in there, uh, you're going to overdose yourself on that. And that can have some reputable harm to your body, such as kidney stones, uh, problems with your kidneys in general. So you want to consult a doctor and professional and make sure you're taking the right amount of, uh, for your person. So once again, this is the information man uh, show. I thank you for out there. Those of you out there that are listening to what I had to say, believe me, consult your doctor, do your own research on some of the things that you heard me talk about. Uh, you can Google and there's tons of information out there about vitamin D. Um, it's a fan. It's, it's, it's a lot of us are more deficient in this than we think we are. Once again, it is D2 vitamin D that is produced by plants. D3 is what's produced in your body. And then you get some of your vitamin D when you're outside taking a walk on a nice sunny day. But you need to have a combination of of those things consistently in your life to to decrease your deficiency because deficiency can open you up to other health problems. And also keep in mind the region of the country where you live. There are certain areas of the country in America or in the world where there's cold climate, where there's not a people are not getting as much sun as they normally would like. There's some parts of the country when, when it's wintertime and it's snowing, people are hunkered down inside. So you have to figure out, you have to understand where you live at in, in the world to understand um, how, the vitamin D deficiency can affect you and your family and your person. And you got to, I'm going to say this again. I can't say it anymore. You've got to consult a doctor. There is no guarantee. This is not about saying that vitamin D will cure this virus that we're going through, but there are studies that are showing that it does. uh, There is a, uh, a relationship between vitamin D and how it can be positive towards fighting off or helping to decrease um, respiratory uh, issues that this virus is bringing upon people. With that said, this is Information Man of the Information Man Show. Take care and thank you for listening and make sure you subscribe to the channel. I appreciate that. Information is power.
listening to Information Man. Please make sure to subscribe to his channel. You are listening to Information Man. Please make sure to subscribe to his channel. Tell the truth. Information is power. You are listening to Information Man. Please make sure to subscribe to